The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, while Jesus was speaking to the people, behold, his mother and his brethren stood outside, asking to speak to him. But he replied to the man who told him, Who is my mother? And who are my brethren? And stretching out his hand toward his disciples, he said, Here are my mother and my brethren. For whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, those words were never more true than after today's gospel. My dear brothers and sisters, the theme of the gospel today is family. And I come from a very small family, I'm an only child. There's only one of me. My mother is probably whispering a small prayer of thanks at the moment. But growing up, I made friends with brothers and sisters who had much larger families than I did. One of my friends has got six brothers and sisters. The other one's got five. And watching them interact, I always became... I don't know, I suppose a little jealous. I didn't have that company with me all the time. I didn't have somebody to punch or even get punched by, to play with, to chat with, to laugh with, to cry with. So I suppose in a way I got a little jealous. Imagine my joy, my elation, because joy doesn't really cover it, at entering the church and discovering that in the world of Jesus Christ, the way he sees things, everybody united by the faith is family. Every single one of us, not only in this church of All Saints Belito, because we like to call ourselves the family of All Saints Belito, and that's great, and that's right, but not just us, but every single person who shares the faith, Sharkas Kral, Stanga, Tongat, Hillcrest, and much, much further afield. United by our love for God, by our love of God, we are brothers and sisters, no doubt about it. Now, being friends with siblings and large families, I also learned a very important lesson. That families don't act in reality as how they are portrayed on television. In reality, it's not ideal. There are difficulties, there are struggles, the disagreements sometimes very long-lasting ones, fights, terribly hurtful things are said and done. And siblings who should be the closest don't speak to each other for years on end, don't know each other. 
and reflecting on the faith, on our situation as church, on what Jesus Christ wants and expects of us, on Jesus' vision for our family, I can't help but see the parallels between a real-life family situation of difficulty and trial and our family of church. We label ourselves conservatives or liberals. We place ourselves into camps of progressive thinkers or backward thinkers, the ones who follow the rules and the ones who don't. We draw lines where we should be extending hands of friendship and fellowship. It comes to the point where those who call themselves family in a church hardly know one another. But that's the challenge of family, isn't it? Because no matter the fight, the disagreement, the trouble, the hurt, I was taught a long time ago by my grandfather that family is family. Nothing can change that. Nothing can, can alter that state of affairs. You can't rub out your brother or your sister. And just as it is with biological family, so too it is in the faith family. We are one and united in, through, by our love for God, our love of God, in, through, by our fellowship with Jesus Christ. No matter the challenges, the difficulties, the disagreements, no matter the differences, English, Zulu, black, white, at the end of the day, at the very end of the day, when the Father calls us home to him, all of those things don't matter because we're family. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, I invite each and every one of us to keep this gospel at the forefront of our minds, not only today, but every single day that we live the Christian life. That you and I, Father Stephen, and all the Wendy's in our church, and all the Catholics and Christians beyond, we are brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.